Keith Larson. Look at the faces on you. Look at you. <laughs> the Fiends Brigade, you gingalings. <laughs> the Mental Defective League in formation. News Talk 1110 WBT. <laughs> Your first seven seconds of the new year coming up in a half an hour, right after the news at 11.30. What else is coming up for this year? We'll find out in just a second with our trends genius. We talk to every uh, first show back. And uh, Kay Larson at WBT.com, why doesn't the polar vortex have a name? I don't know. (laughs) That's a good question. But I'm asked here... We're hearing all about this polar vortex. Yeah, I don't know. You know, you, know, you got the hurricanes, and they name all the big storms. I don't know why the poor polar vortex has no name. Name the polar vortex, 704-570. Although I'm leery, uh, you get into certain conversations. I don't know that we should begin taking calls naming uh, anything that is essentially a vortex. <sighs> that could get interesting. Uh, interesting, actually, is our trends guy, Gerald Solente. Now, this is a guy, he'll explain, uh, this is not predictions, this is not like uh, the amazing Kreskin or psychics. Trends, uh, is spotting, studying, um, as, as you might call it, this is something that Gerald Solente has been doing for a long time. He's the publisher of the Trends Journal. His website, their website is trendsjournal.com, and and businesses, academics, companies, industries, subscribe to his Trends Journal. He looks out and isn't making wacky predictions, but is like reading indicators and talking about things that are likely occur uh, to occur, trends that are developing. And we've spoken with Gerald every first show back after the new year here for several years now. He's back on the telephone with us now. Gerald! Hey Keith, happy New Year! Thanks for having me back. Yeah, happy New Year. Did I get? I, I always I try to get the explanation right. It's you know you're not making uh, wacky like psychic tarot card predictions. Trends are something else. Yeah, well, it, current events form future trends. We're all doing in life what we're doing because of decisions we've made, and then there are the wild cards. You know that you know like. Uh, uh, you know, hurricanes, uh, Fukushima, whatever. Sure. You know, things you don't know. And and things going on behind the scenes you don't know. So you only could take the information that you have and then see where it's leading. So I'm going to give you an example of a trend tracking lesson and where we're looking, where the economy is going. All right. So one of the things you have to do as a trend forecaster, unfortunately, is read all the time, holidays included. So here is a New Year's Eve story, a Christmas Eve story, in the Financial Times front page. How many people are really tuned in on Christmas Eve? Not a lot. Not me. Concerns mount over China care squeeze. China's cash squeeze has worsened despite the central bank's repeated attempts to calm markets with emergency money injections. Then you go to New Year's Eve, Financial Times, same story, different line. Fears after key China debt level soars 70%. Hey, how about that Duck Dynasty, huh? <laughs> you know, really, I mean, 9 million people watch in a country, 316 million. Why am I babbling on about, you know, fears after key level debt in China soars 70%? Then you pick up the, the same day in the back pages of the New York Times. China says local level debt soars stirring fear. Go on and on. Then you look at the news just coming out. China's manufacturing purchasing indexes are all down. China's facing a worse bubble than we had in 2008. The, their, their central bank did the same thing as our Federal Reserve, dumped trillions of dollars, where you want in their case, into the system. Now the bubble is bursting. Real estate prices are going up, like in Shanghai and Beijing, like 10, 12, 15, 20 percent a month. You know, the thing is out of control. They're trying to cut, cut it back now. That brings us back to the Fed tapering. This next this month, they're going to cut back $10 billion in bond buying and, and mortgage-backed securities. What does that mean? It means that interest rates are going up. And this was an interest rate recovery. In China, they have to raise interest rates to stop the bubble from blowing up. In, in, in the black market, they call it the shadow banking system in China. 
people are borrowing money at 40 percent interest rates to keep the scam going. So this is all right. Let me stop you there. So this is an example in progress here as you're tying these various uh, factoids and bits of information together that so often if if they're reported at all or if people see them at all, they're like uh, individual dots out there. And, and you're the guy connecting the dots now in in doing that, connecting the dots and saying this looks like the picture that I think is forming here as I'm connecting these dots. So tell me using that example. Is this? Are you telling me that this is one of the main uh, trend concerns that you're seeing affecting us here this year? Exactly, because in the United States, it's the same story. They called it quantitative easing. They dumped trillions of dollars into the system, and the only people it's been helping are the financial institutions and the stock markets. The average guy on the street, median household income has declined 8.3 percent since 2008, since the recession began. So now we put it all together. Now they're tapering. Interest rates are going up. You're looking at the 10-year bond that's floating over like 3%. It's hit its highest level since 2011. You know, Keith, you're a nice guy. You want to buy a car, no money down, no interest rate, 0%. And if you can't, if you have a lousy credit rating, don't worry. Call this number. We're going to find a car dealer near you so you can buy a car. Low interest rates are the only thing that's fueled this economy. And you see that changing this year? Yes. Even though the Federal Reserve is saying they're going to keep interest rates historically low. So when interest rates go up, the economy goes down, and across the globe, interest rates are going up. You see, one of the things, again, connecting the dots, as you aptly put it, all of these emerging markets, Indonesia, Brazil, Chile, the hot money because of the low interest rates was flowing into these countries, India, another one. Now, with interest rates going up, that money is flowing out of those countries. So what are those countries doing? Those countries are now facing recession, particularly India. Billion people, what are they doing? Well, their money's flowing out. So what do they do? They're raising interest rates. Brilliant. You're raising interest rates. It's going to cost more to borrow as your economy is going down. So you can see where things are heading. We're going to head into a worse recession than the one we just left. Our belief is they're going to continue tapering the Federal Reserve. Interest rates are going up. And then by March, you're going to start seeing panic hit the streets. It's already starting. As we're speaking, the Dow is starting off the year on a down note. You're looking at the Asian markets. They're down 2 to 1.5%, 2%. So we're looking at really <clears throat> some major financial problems happening by the second quarter of 2000, if not earlier. Jay, Gerald, you're starting out the new year making me want to jump off my chair. <laughs> Right out of the gate. Well, okay, so that's interest rates and economy. Uh, quickly, on another front, tell me another developing trend uh, in just a, a minute or so here that, that you see on the horizon for this year. And here's what we're going to do. Ed, you save this tape. We're going to get Gerald on the phone our last week of the year before New Year's. And that'll be when we play this and we look back and we see how on target Gerald was with the trends. So with that in mind, Gerald, give me another trend for 2014. Biggest one, populism all over the world. Name the country, Bangladesh, Cambodia, uh, Italy, Spain, Portugal. There are 25% uh, of the Euro people in the European Union Parliament want to break away from the, from the euro. You're going to start seeing in virtually every European country sweeping across the globe a throw-out-the-bums movement and a, a reestablishment of a new party system. And also, one of the big trends, this is one of the biggest trends we're seeing, and we're one of the first calling it, the self-sufficiency economy. Economies around the world are going to start realizing that, look, we do, this global trade is only helping the multinationals. We're a country, as I mentioned, 316 million people. We could be totally self-sufficient economy. The only people that are benefiting this from this are the people that are going to Cambodia, Bangladesh, India, China, getting cheap product made, sending it back, and marking it up. Meanwhile, our economy is going down and our wages are going down. So a big trend by the end of the year, you're going to see populism and self-sufficiency economies become a big thing. And by the way, I believe that's the saving grace that could change this country. Well, I agree with you on the populism. So there you have the trends. 
uh, three big ones, interest rates and economic troubles, the uh, uh, populism and the uh, self-sufficient economies. And I'm going to give you a trend, Gerald. Here's mine. It's not just countries that are going to be going self-sufficient economies. It's people. It's individuals. More and more people are saying it's the companies that are in control. They're benefiting. More and more people are going to pursue their own self-sufficiency economically, uh, as many of us already have. I agree with you 100 percent. Gerald Salente, TrendsJournal.com, publisher of the Trends Journal. Gerald, we're going to dial you up the third week of December. Okay, thanks a lot, man. Happy New Year. Keith 